Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition stop stories. Government to repatriate more than 200 St. Lucians employed on cruise ships. Health officials are encouraged by an increased number of persons accessing the respiratory clinics. And critical equipment in the fight against COVID-19 arrive on island. Weeks of diplomatic efforts and pooling of resources has resulted in 290 nationals being repatriated to St. Lucia on Friday, May 8, 2020. The nationals are employees of Carnival Glory and Caribbean Princess cruise ships who over the past month have been desirous of returning home due to industry challenges presented by the COVID-19 pandemic. 207 will arrive on Carnival Glory and 12 aboard Caribbean Princess. Observing the national health and safety protocols outlined for the management of the COVID-19 response and being satisfied that adequate preparations have been made with the cruise line, Carnival Corporation and the nationals aboard prior to arrival, the Department of Health and Wellness has granted permission for both Carnival Glory and Caribbean Princess to dock at podcast trees where the disembarkation process will be overseen by port health authorities. Public access to the port of entry will be suspended during this operation and will be managed by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force. All frontline personnel at Port Castries will facilitate arrivals wearing necessary PPEs. It is mandatory that their 219 returning nationals arrive wearing face masks. They will be immediately transported to a government-operated quarantine facility where they will be housed for a period of 14 days. The returning nationals will also be tested for COVID-19 during the quarantine period. The Ministry of Health and Wellness says it is encouraged by the increased number of nationals accessing care at respiratory clinics amid COVID-19. Health officials believe that this is a clear indication that St. Lucians are heeding advice on the pandemic. The five respiratory clinics which have been established island-wide allow for the early identification, testing, isolation and treatment of cases of COVID-19. Of the 18 confirmed cases which St. Lucia recorded, 12 of them have been captured for the community respiratory clinics. On May 5, 2020, the Ministry of Health received the results of 33 tests conducted on persons who had presented at the facilities and community testing for COVID-19. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. All of these 33 samples tested negative for COVID 19. To date, a total of 475 tests have been conducted nationally, and of these 18 persons have tested positive. Of these confirmed cases, 15 are fully recovered and have reintegrated into their communities, and three are active cases currently in hospital care. These three cases are all stable and are responding well to care from the clinical team. Dr. Belmar George says the ministry and its various departments engage in implementation of the health sector's response is on high alert as COVID-19 continues to be a public health threat. It is our awareness of this that drives us to continue to work intensively in implementing all of the core components of our health sector response, including screening, testing, contact tracing, health education, and clinical care. We recognize the efforts of a wide cross-section of the population in adopting the recommended infection prevention and control measures and taking the necessary precautions when going out into the public. We note that many cases of COVID-19 are mild, so we continue to recommend that anyone with respiratory signs and symptoms should refrain from going into public places. We continue to request that every individual practice the standard recommendations to prevent the spread of infection. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belmar George. And health officials continue to urge members of the public exhibiting flu like symptoms to seek care at any of the respiratory clinics across the island. Assistant Principal Nursing Officer Tekla Jabatis explained that the clinics have been instrumental in capturing COVID 19 cases thus far. 12 of the 18 confirmed cases were captured through our community respiratory clinics. They continue to function well, receiving a number of persons who present with flu-like symptoms on a daily basis. We continue to encourage persons with 
flu-like symptoms to access care at those clinics rather than the routine clinics so that all the necessary procedures can be performed. Symptoms generally include a history of fever, mild cough, sore throat, or other flu-like symptoms. The processes at the respiratory clinics include being triaged by a nurse, that is checking vital signs, which includes your respiratory rate, temperature, etc. Once triaged, the individual will be assessed by a physician who will determine whether he or she meets the criteria for testing for COVID-19. It must be noted that only patients who are symptomatic will be tested based on clinical assessment. Medical Director of Victoria Hospital and Owen King European Union Hospital, Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford, explained that common symptoms in positive cases of COVID-19 include runny nose, sore throat, cough, shortness of breath, and loss of sensational abilities where individuals are no longer able to smell or taste like before. Dr. Eugene Ford indicated that individuals experiencing respiratory symptoms can also go to the Victoria Hospital where they will be assessed and administered care. While you are at VH, you're just not sitting there mm -hmm. because you can come with a comorbidity. We cannot let you sit at Victoria Hospital waiting for a swab results and not treat you for your other ailments. So you have physicians and you have nurses to the necessaries to keep you treated for your other ailments with the proper protective gear while we're waiting for your lab results. If you realize your results come back negative, we will not keep you at Victoria Hospital. If we know you need to be hospitalized, we will safely transfer you via Red Cross from Victoria Hospital to OKUH because we know for sure you don't have COVID-19. So we continue treating you there for your other comorbidity because we know you don't have COVID-19. If you do have COVID-19, you need to stay back at Victoria Hospital where we'll continue treating you for your ill, your ill, whatever illness you have, taking consideration that COVID-19 is very much on the forefront. We need to treat you for that as well. Medical Director of Victoria Hospital and Owen King European Union Hospital, Dr. Alicia Eugene Ford. Minister for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development and Parliamentary Representative for Miko North, Dr. Gail Rigabert, has made a passionate appeal for constituents to adhere to the protocols established for COVID-19. The appeal comes amid concern that communities on the east coast of the island are highly vulnerable to community spread. We are doing everything we can to contain transmission and to ensure that our community is once again COVID-19 free. That therefore means we must adhere to and we must observe the protocols as advised by the Ministry of Health. We are as far as is feasible to remain at home, to stay at home. If you must go out, please wear a mask. Remember to wash your hands frequently. Use hand sanitizer. Keep your living areas very, very clean. I beg of you, to practice social distancing when you go to the community shops, the post office, the credit union, or any other public place as a matter of fact. We are doing this to save lives, to save your lives, to save our lives, the lives of our loved ones and the lives of our neighbors. Please, let us do the right thing for the sake of us all. That was Dr. Gail Rigobert. St. Lucia's fight against COVID-19 will be boosted following the donation of test kits from the Cayman Islands. Mind this report from Fernel Neptune. Representatives from the Ezra Long Laboratory of the Owen King EU Hospital were present to receive the generous gift of test kits from the government of the Cayman Islands, which will provide greater capacity to test for COVID-19. 
Director of the Ezra Long Lab, Dr. Wayne Felicien, expressed gratitude for the contribution and also highlighted the support the government of St. Lucia provided to the Cayman Islands. Late last week, we received communication from the Cayman Islands that the testing capabilities were affected by the lack of pipettes, which is integral in the extraction process for testing for COVID-19. We, having pipettes in excess at the moment, were able to offer them about three boxes of it. In exchange, they reached out to us and were so grateful that they decided to donate to us 50 test kits, which gave us the cap capabilities to do 5,000 tests. Dr. Felicia also expressed hope the test kits will strengthen St. Lucia's capability to expand testing in the communities. Well, it actually doubles our existing capabilities to test. Prior to that, we had about 7,280 tests available. And with that, it's gone up to about almost 14,000. So that gives us um, greater capacity uh, to do a mass testing, which is something that the Epidemiological Department and Ministry of Health have been trying to task us with. The Ministry of Health and Wellness appeals to St. Lucians who are feeling unwell with symptoms of a dry cough, fever, sore throat, and shortness of breath to visit any of the five respiratory clinics island-wide. St. Lucia has recorded a total of 18 cases of COVID-19, 15 of whom have recovered, and three in hospital care. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. St. Lucia has received another donation of critical equipment for the war against COVID-19. Here's Anisia Antoine. The government of St. Lucia commenced the handing over of 1,650 face shields to improve the safety of the police and fire officers on the front line of the war against COVID-19. The face shields were procured from Eventstar Limited, a Florida-based company which has been operating in St. Lucia since 2008. The director of Eventstar Limited St. Lucia, Daniel Belize, presented their donation. Early on in April, um, event star structures in Doral reached out to the government of St. Lucia um, and asked what sort of uh, assistance that they would need and um, we're here today now to present the first batch of uh, face shields for protective services. Um, so far as Jesse has indicated we have donated over 10,000 in the uh, Doral, um, Davy, Broward, um, Dade counties mm -hmm. in, in Florida and um, since our inception in St. Lucia in 2008, we thought it was best that we also donate into St. Lucia as well. So um, this is a simple handover ceremony here this morning. And I'm hoping that the protective services use these um, protective shields as they are designed. Uh, they are for their protection. The Minister for Home Affairs and National Security, Senator Honorable Herman Guild Francis, expressed gratitude to Events Star Limited for their contribution towards the safety of the frontline workers. Senator Francis noted that each officer will receive their own face shield. The total cost of those shields cost 35,000 EC. Um, we are going to be getting 1,650 of those shields. Presently, we have 900 on island. Um, and we expect to get the other uh, the, uh, thousands, sorry, we are, we're supposed to get the other 900 shields on Wednesday, the 6th of May. Um, these shields are going to be used by the protective services. Um, so the police, the fire, and the bodily correctional facility. I, I'm, I'm particularly pleased to donate this um, face mask to the fire department because they are the ones that actually go and pick up those um, persons who are suspected of being infested with, um, or infected, sorry, with COVID-19. So they are really the first respondent. They are the closest to those individuals. And I think it is important that they be protected. Acting Commissioner of Police Milton Daisy noted that the donation of face protective shields will go a long way in assisting the police force in performing its duties during the COVID-19 pandemic. We have our team, which we call an extraction team, dedicated to getting persons who 
we believe have come in illegally or who have escaped quarantine. Those persons are taken back into quarantine. Now, you will appreciate that it is a, a very dangerous task, and the officers, I must commend them, as I've been doing, for being so dedicated to doing this. The Prime Minister of St. Lucia, Honorable Alan Chastney, who was present at the handing over ceremony, made an appeal to the public to practice precautionary measures as the COVID-19 pandemic is still active. COVID is not over. Um, COVID is still very much alive. Um, and we saw recently that we had an additional case um, here in St. Lucia. And for the first time in a long time, the person actually had not been previously identified and was not in quarantine. Um, so the risk is still there. And while we have taken off of some of the more strenuous um, uh, protocols, uh, everyone is still continuing to ask to practice social distancing um, and to be safe when they go out. The handing over ceremony of the face protective shields took place on Tuesday, May 5th, 2020 at the Government Information Service Studios. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Anduan reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle a Creole. Coronavirus? I am worried, Gasa. It's only old people dying from that. Hold up. Being young does not mean being safe. Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novel, a Creole. Monsieur Tarjanel, Monsieur Madame Department, qui n'est responsabilité pour information en gouvernement cette le GIS, à son mépi télévision nationale pays à NTN, qu'à poser nouvelle à Creole, poser Primus Hutchinson. Département des affaires les consommateurs, un ministère des affaires commerce, qu'à les pratiques et public là, généralement, à séance là qui gouvernement a continué à chaîne commitment pour que toutes les marchandises qui ont la législation qui a contrôlé les prix qui ont supposé vendre suivent ces règles. Officier de l'information au département, Mme Melissa williams Davy expliquait que la législation qui est en place pour contrôler les prix qui s'étaient attiqués avec les marchandises qui ont vendu, il mentionnait SIC, DIWI, Foreign France, TIMI, Cornflakes, Oats, LET, ces petits tintons et cornbeef. C'est un parmi les marchandises qui a bas contrôle la législation pour les supposés vendre. Madame Melissa Devy fait un appel pour ces places de business qui ont vendu ces articles-là pour faire assurer que les suivent ces règles qui ont place en bas de la loi. Ils ont aussi créé à ces places de business-là pour faire assurer ces marchandises-là bien exposées et visibles et pour ne pas vendre ces marchandises-là en haut prix. Madame Devy aussi vêtit ces places de business-là pour ne pas acheter des marchandises en haut la musique et faire changer qui pour obéir puis qui la législation PIA a déjà établi pour vendre ces marchandises-là. Officier de formation a aussi fait ces mêmes business-là qui a acheté des produits de l'autre pays pour faire assurer que avant de commencer à vendre des pièces de produits qui ont bas législation pour les pays, ce faux avec faux de produits et formation avec le document pour le département des affaires des consommateurs qui a montré tous ces prix pour ces marchandises-là, vendre et aussi pour y avoir tout le récit supposé available pour ces officiers du département des affaires et des consommateurs de voir exercer ça. Selon Mme Lévy, le gouvernement a considéré pour prendre plus fort démarche pour protéger les consommateurs pays-là. Des vidéos aussi, le gouvernement n'y complètement 
en plein pour protéger les natifs et les consommateurs, principalement à la menace de maladie corona. Officier d'information dit aussi à pas d'action pour veiller pour le contrôle des prix marchandises, il y a aussi qu'à considérer pour établir une législation pour place business qui a aussi pris sans du département. Directement, il y a fait un appel pour place business pour agir en façon qui est honnête et responsable, protéger le consommateur de haussement pour les marchandises et les marchandises. Pour ne pas changer ces marchandises derrière le côté, pour inspirer la réduction de réduction pour commencer à hausser pour les marchandises. Le département dit qu'il y a aussi, aussi pour ça. Les agences de santé en pays ont continué pour créer à ce public là pour observer et suivre ce qui a gouverné de manière à ce qu'on peut faire contre la maladie de Corona. Il y a une discussion à ce NTN, deuxième chef de santé et l'événement, Mme Cheryl St. Romain, déclaré que la responsabilité a à ce qu'on a département de santé pour continuer, pour encourager le public là, pour suivre toutes ces règles qui sont nécessaires pour protéger contre la maladie de Corona. St. Romain a ajouté que ce n'est pas parce que les gens ne peuvent pas questionner souvent qu'on avant. Pourquoi que tout le bagage en ordre et pour les officiers laisser à ce ces conseils là. So, c'est seulement nous ça et nous tout nous ni pour travailler ensemble nous pas ça fait ça pas y en a l'autre. Mm -hmm. Ministère mm -hmm. pas ça fait pas quoi, um, média pas ça fait pas quoi pas mener mm -hmm. formation. Mm -hmm. Nous as a, a, a country uh, simply oui. that's right nous ni pour faire ça ensemble si nous ni pour combattre vermin ça. Madame Saint Romain qui a ce business. Pour faire assurer, il y a tout le en place pour ni travailler et, y, et pratique aussi. Pour faire assurer, il y a de l'eau et savon en place, business ça là, sanitizer, pour l'année ligne bien marché, pour changer ces pratiques ça là, si c'est bien hors d'un à l'autre, en parmi l'autre. Deuxième chef l'a dit aussi, les officiers de l'événement santé publique, qui passé pour visiter place business, pour faire assurer qui se met ces business ça là, qui respecter ces règles là qui en place. Le 5 mois de mai 2020, le ministère de la Santé a reçu des résultats de trois tests qui ont été conduits à ce monde qui était présenté à ces facilités pour la maladie de Corona et aussi des tests qui ont été faits à ces communes pour la maladie de Corona. Le rapport a montré que tous ces trois tests sont sortis négatifs. En total, 475 tests ont été conduits au long pays avec 18 personnes qui ont été positives. À 18 là, 15 ans ont été déjà fait bien. J'ai arrivé à Casio pendant trois à l'hôpital qui a reçu le traitement présentement. En ces 18 là qui a enregistré à cette ici pour le présent, 12 ans, c'était un résultat des traitements à ces cliniques, à ces différentes communes qui établissent principalement pour ça. Cette clinique, ça là, ni qui au lieu de cette ici, c'est pour conduire test pour l'examiner, qui quantité de monde qui fait contact et puis monde qui a trouvé positif pour aussi éduquer le public là en affaires santé. Le département de santé et l'affaire public là comprend que malgré plusieurs cas de maladie corona faible toujours, le public là n'est pour continuer à suivre ces règles là qui en place, par exemple, pas combler en place publique, laver la main et puis savoir de l'eau, servir le sanitizer, porter le masque à souffrir de l'eau et rester loin de l'autre monde qui a montré si maladie ça là. C'est comme ça que nous retrouvons pour la nouvelle année, madame. Je vous remercie autant pour vous garder, pour vous avoir une invitation, pour que je ne puisse pas considérer que vous avez la vie. Dernier président de l'autre nouvelle à Créole. À présent, je vous remercie pour cette journée. Merci à Pio Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.